So yesterday there was a massive outage related to CrowdStrike and this is related to their software that is used to monitor for basically malicious behavior on your computer, meaning it acts like a firewall and it's basically preventing from malicious attackers to accessing your computer. Now this is a huge problem of course and it's good to have software like CrowdStrike that is monitoring this type of stuff to protect your computers, your systems for all kinds of businesses. However, in this case, an update to CrowdStrike with a bug caused an issue with Windows operating system, which caused the biggest issue ever, which affected everybody in the world that uses CrowdStrike, for the exception of Mac OS and Linux. Those computers are not affected, and of course, companies that don't use CrowdStrike. However, bunch of businesses, starting from hospitals to banks to government installations, everybody got affected by this it was a huge deal so what was going on well the issue is blue screen of death and here are some examples of that and you can see that you know blue screen of death this is what happens when you try to boot up your computer it's a huge deal and you of course have to fix it now imagine thousands of computers within within your company that are affected by this so what can you do well you can try to repair it and there is a fix for it which is i'm going to show you right now so the fix is to get to the folder where CrowdStrike is installed. So if you go to your PC, go to C drive, go to Windows, go to System32, Drivers, CrowdStrike folder, and then within that folder there will be a file called C0000291. Dot SYS. It's actually a lot longer. There are actually two more sets of numbers and then it ends with SYS. But this is the main file name that you're looking for. And there won't be any other ones because this file is specific part of this update that is causing this issue. So what you want to do is go inside of that folder and delete this and then reboot the computer. And I know you're saying is, well, how can I get into it when it's a blue screen of that? I can't even get into the computer. So once you get a blue screen of that, what you want it to do is let it reboot three times on its own. And that's what usually will happen. And then at some point it will say recovery mode. And in this case, you would select see advanced repair options. And then through there, you can get into a safe boot mode. So you need to go into the safe boot mode. So that way you can go inside and delete that file that I showed you previously. So if you're lucky, you'll get to the point where you see that recovery window. So you go ahead and select advanced options. And then from there, go ahead and select troubleshoot. And then select advanced options. And then go ahead and select startup settings. And then in here, basically will give us an option to boot into the safe mode. And you can see here it says enable safe mode and this is what we're aiming for here so we can log in through the safe mode which which will allow us to get to the operating system so we can delete that file that we are trying to delete at this point go ahead and select 4 to boot to the safe mode on your keyboard and once it gets to this point where you can actually log in where you can see the login screen you need a local admin login id and password for me it's automatically going to log me in because i'm already set up to automatically log in but for this you would actually need to find that so it's also known as laps or a local admin password and while you are within the safe mode you can navigate to that drive that you need you can navigate to the c drive go to c windows System32, which is down here somewhere, System32, Drivers folder, CrowdStrike, and here is our file. So go ahead and just delete it. So you can right click and delete, but make sure you do hold shift on your keyboard to basically make it permanent, or you can just empty your recycle bin afterwards, or you can just make sure it's selected, hold shift, and then press delete on your keyboard. Either way, we'll get you there. So let's go ahead and just right click so you can see it visually. So hold shift on your keyboard, right click, select delete. And it says here, are you sure you want to permanently delete this file? Select yes. And now you can reboot the computer, which will fix the problem. Now, half the time, this doesn't even work. You can't even get to the safe mode. 
And for that, I do have a solution. And it's a very similar solution to this, except we're going to use a command line and we're not even going to have to log into the computer at all. We're just going to do it the other way. All right, let's find out how. So the workaround is to have a USB. So you need a USB with at least eight gigabytes of free space. And you need to use Windows Media Creation Tool to create a bootable version of Windows 10 or Windows 11 onto your USB drive. And from there, you can boot into the recovery mode. And actually, we need to get to the point where we need to just open up a command line. And then through a command line, we will delete that file instead of having to log in at all. So go ahead and Google Windows Media Creation Tool. That's the easiest way to get to it. And then I select here, Create Installation Media for Windows. Scroll down, select Windows 10 or Windows 11. Let's go ahead and select Windows 11 in this case. Scroll a little bit more down and select Create Windows 11 Installation Media. Go ahead and download it. And once it downloads, go ahead and open it up. Select yes, make sure you run it as administrator. You also have to be logged in as administrator to that computer in order to create this media. Make sure you have a USB with at least eight gigabytes of storage installed and plugged in. Go ahead and accept this agreement. And within a few seconds, it will actually ask you, what do you want to install this on? And it will basically look for the USB drive. And here it is. This is just the first part of it. In most cases, you can't even change this. But anyway, select next, select the USB flash drive, and then select next. And then after that, select next once more time, and then it will go ahead and, and download and install a bootable USB drive for your computer. So let's see how that looks like when we plug it into our computer. So this is what it looks like on my computer. In this case, I have to select generic mass storage drive, which is basically the USB where I have the Windows boot operating system. And in this case, it will execute it. So go ahead and just press enter. And once it's get there, it's gonna be real quick. Uh, you have to basically get it into a troubleshooting mode. So let's go ahead and do that. So once you get to this point, just go ahead and select next. And instead of installing, we're going to go ahead and select repair your computer. The point of this, so we can get to the command line, go ahead and select troubleshoot and then go ahead and select command prompt. By default, it switched to the X drive and we need the C drive actually. But if I type in DIR here, this looks like it would be the C drive, but it's actually not. You can see that the directories here are recovery, INF and etc. And this is not what we want. What we actually want to do is switch to the C drive. So go ahead and type in C colon. Now go ahead and type in DIR just to make sure you are within that. In this case, actually C drive is not that either. For some reason, whenever you run this utility, it likes to change the drive letters, at least temporarily while you are using this utility. So in this case, let's go ahead and try to actually find what it's supposed to be our C drive. So let's go ahead and type in D letter to see if there's anything in there. Oh, sure enough, there is a D drive. Let's go ahead and type in DIR to, to list directories. And this looks like a C drive more than anything, right? So I know it says the D drive, but it's actually the C drive in this case. So this is our operating system that's installed on this computer. Now you will get a bit locker pop-up if the computer is bit locked that means if it's locked then you need to get that bit locker recovery key and this is found within actor directory typically so if you pull up the computer within actor directory there will be a tab for bit locker recovery key and all you have to do is just match the code that to goes to that bit locker okay so once you've done that if you do get that in this case we don't have that here we are. In this case, we will just go ahead and navigate to our CrowdStrike folder that we were there previously within GUI, within graphical user interface of our operating system. Anyways, so just go ahead and type in CD forward slash Windows forward slash System32 forward slash Drivers forward slash CrowdStrike. All right. Here we are within that folder. Let's go ahead and type in DIR just so we can see the content of it. And there it is. There is our file here that is called C0000291.sys. Again, once you actually search for this within the CrowdStrike, this will actually be a lot longer. It will be three more sets. I'm sure, I think actually two to three sets of zeros within it. But what you need is actually this file. So there will only be one file that is there called that. This is just a pretend file that we are using. 
all right go ahead and highlight it like that with your mouse do a control C because remember this is going to be a long string so that way you don't make a mistake you don't have to type it in you can just copy it in there once we go in to delete it and then type in D E L space and then do a control V on your keyboard so you can copy so you can paste that file name so that way once you hit enter it is now deleted so let's go ahead and type in dir we can now see that there is no well we cannot see the file that we've just deleted right so it's gone at this point you can simply reboot the computer and the file name will come back because it will be updated version because CrowdStrike folks are actually pushing the updated version of that file that's not that doesn't have that bug in it that will cause the problem however if successful this will simply just boot to windows and the problem will be solved